الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله خرج علي بن المأمون ابن الخليفة العباس المأمون خرج من قصره إلى شرفات القصر فأشرف ذات يوم ينظر إلى سوق بغداد والآن نتحدث عن أمير هذا شخص لم يعرف الجوع قط شخص لم يظم أبدا شخص كان يلبس أفضل اللباس وأجمله وكان وكان يأكل أفضل الطعام أخذ ينظر إلى الناس في السوق هذا يذهب وهذا يأتي ولفت نظر الأمير رجل حمال يعمل للناس بالأجرة يعني يعمل أو يحمل حمولته من دكان إلى دكان من مكان إلى مكان ويظهر على هذا الحمال الصلاح والنسك فأخذ يتابع الأمير حركاته في السوق فكان الحمال إذا انتصف الضحى ترك السوق ترك السوق وخرج منه إلى ضفاف دجلة وهناك توضأ وصلى ركعتين ورفع يديه إلى الحي القيوم فأخذ الأمير ينظر إلى هذا فإذا صلى الحمال الضحى عاد فعمل إلى قبيل الظهر ثم اشترى خبزة جافة فأخذها إلى نهر دجلة فيأتي إلى النهر فيبل الخبز في الماء ويشرب من الماء ويأكل الخبز Today I want to relate the story Inshallah ta'ala we can learn something from it and we can take benefit from it It is about Ali ibn al-Ma'mun an Amir, a prince the son of the Khalifa the Abbasid Khalifa So one day he stepped out of his palace onto the balcony Actually, actually uh, he stepped out onto one of the tall towers and from there he observed the marketplace in Baghdad. Now we're talking about an Amir, a man who doesn't know what hunger is, a man who never experienced thirst in his life. We're talking about an individual who lived a luxurious life, wearing the most beautiful of clothing and riding the best of riding animals and so on and so forth. So he steps out and he is watching the people coming and going. But his attention was drawn to one individual who worked in the marketplace. And basically what he did is that he carried things for people. He was paid in order to carry goods from one place to another, from one shop to another. And as he observed this person, he could tell that there's something different about him and he looked to be somewhat, somewhat pious. So he continued to observe this man. And so he noticed that in the later part of the morning, this man would leave the marketplace 
and he would go to the shore of the Tigris River and before doing so he would go and buy a dry piece of bread so when he went out to the Tigris River he would dip that dry piece of bread in the water and eat that bread and he would drink from that water as well and after a while once he, and, and then he would pray Salat al duha and he would sit raising his hands before the ever-living Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After praying Salat al duha the man would return to the marketplace and he would and he would continue doing he would continue doing his work. So the man is, is working in the marketplace and then he goes back out to the Tigris River where he does his wudu for Salat al-Dhuhr. قُلْنَا إِنَّهُ يُصَلِّي صَلَاتُ الظُّهْرِ ثُمَّ يَنَامُ سَاعَةً And after that he would take, he would take a rest for a while. ثُمَّ يَسْتَيْقِذُ وَيَنْزِلُ إِلَى السُّوْقِ فَيَعْمَلُ وَيَسْتَهِدْ ثُمَّ يَشْتَرِي خُبْزًا وَيَذْهُ إِلَى بَيْتِهِ So this is how he spent his day. Once he comes back to the marketplace, he works for a while, and then he goes and buys some bread and returns to his home. وَفِي الْيَوْمِ الثَّانِي يَرُودُ إِلَى هَذَا الْبَرْنَامِجِ وَإِلَى هَذَا الْجَدْوَلِ وَلَا يَتَغَيَّرُ عَنْ وَكَذَلِكَ فِي الْيَوْمِ الثَّالِثِ وَالرَّابِعِ وَهَكَذَا And so the Amir, every day he steps out onto this balcony or this tower to observe and he's watching this particular man and he notices on the second and the third and the fourth day it's the same routine. The man doesn't change his routine at all. فَأَرْسَلَ الْأَمِيرُ جُنْدِيًّا مِنْ جُنُودِهِ إِلَىٰ هَذَا الْحَمَّالِ لِيَسْتَدْعِيَهُ لِيُكَلِّمَهُ فِي فِي الْقَصْرِ So one day, the Amir decides that he wants to talk to this man. So he sends one of his soldiers, if you will, to call that man so he can speak to him in the palace. فَذَهَبَ الْجُنْدِيُّ وَاسْتَدْعَى الْحَمَّالِ الَّذِي قَالَ لَهُ وَمَا لِي وَمُلُوكَ بَنِي الْعَبَّاسِ مالي وللخرفاء ليس بيني وبين الأمراء من صلة ليس لي قضية ولا مشكلة ولا مهمة. And when he goes and addresses this poor man, the poor man says to him, and what what does he want from me? I have no relationship with the with the Amirs, with the princes, with the royal family. I have no need of them. I don't have a problem that needs to be solved. I don't have any issues whatsoever. ثم يقول له إن أشكل علي شيء رفعته إلى الحي القيوم وإن نابني شيء أعده إلى الواحد الأحد وإن جعت أشبعني الله وإن ضمأت أروان الله ما عندي لا دار ولا عقار ولا أرض أنا بالله وبالله أنا. and then he continues. he says to the soldier that came to him that listen, I have no need of anybody in the royal family. if I have any problems, I lodge my complaint with Allah. if some calamity befalls me. I turn to the one and only. And he says to him that if I feel hungry, I know that Allah will provide for me. If I feel thirsty, I know that Allah will cause my thirst to be quenched. He says to him basically, I am from Allah and I belong and I belong to Allah. Qala Jundi. أمر الأمير أن تحضر إليه اليوم فظن المسكين أن الأمير سوف يحاسبه أو يحاكمه 
فقال حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل وهذه الكلمات أيها الأخيار حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل لها قصة أخرى الكلمات هذه سلاح المؤمن على كل حال نتركها نتركها لوقت لوقت آخر but the soldier insisted that the Amin wants to see this man today and the poor man thought he was in trouble that for some reason the Amin wanted to hold him to account for something that he wasn't aware of. And so he said the words, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me, and He is the best disposer of affairs. And these words are in reality a weapon of the believer. And inshallah ta'ala at a later date, we will talk about these words a little bit more, and we will look at the history behind them. Who among the prophets uttered these words? And what was the result? And what was the result of that? دخل هذا الفقير على ابن المأمون وسلم عليه وقال له الأمير ألا تعرفني? So he enters upon the Amir and the Amir says to him, Don't you recognize me? Don't you don't you know me? فقال الرجل ما أتيتك وما رأيتك حتى أعرفك. So he says, I've never come to you before, nor have I ever seen you. That I would now all of a sudden recognize you. قال أنا ابن الخليفة. قال يقولون لذلك. He said, I am the son of the خليفة. He says, yeah, that's what they say about you. قال ماذا تعمل أنت؟ قال أعمل مع عباد الله في بلاد الله. So the Amir asks him, what is it that you do? He says that I work with the slaves of Allah in the land of Allah. قال قد رأيتك. قد رأيتك أياما ورأيت المشقة التي أصابتك فأريد أن أخفف عنك المشقة. And so the Amir says to him, listen, I've been observing you for some days now, and I can see the difficulty which you are living in, and I would like to make things easier. I would like to make things easier for you. قال بماذا؟ قال بأن تسكن معي في ال قصري مع أهلك آكلا شاربا مستريحا. and so he the Amir says to him or the man says to the Amir and how is it that you're going to make things easier for me? he says by having you live with me right here in this palace with your family so you can eat and drink and be free of any of any problems at all. لا هم ولا غم ولا حزن. see when you live here. It's a stress-free life. There's no sadness, there are no worries whatsoever. قَالَ يَبْنَ الْخَلِيفَةِ اسْمَعُوا يُهَا الْأَخْيَارِ قَالَ يَبْنَ الْخَلِيفَةِ لَا هَمَّ عَلَى مَنْ لَا يُذْنِبْ وَلَا غَمَّ عَلَى مَنْ لَمْ يَعْسِ وَلَا حُزْنَ عَلَى مَنْ عَلَى مَنْ لَمْ يُسِ so the man now says to the Khalifa, who says that this is how I want to ease your pain for you, he says, listen, O son of the Khalifa. And we need to listen to these words carefully. Because the Khalifa said to him, there is no worry, there is no stress, and there is no sadness for you. So the man responds to the Khalifa saying, well, the reality is that there are no worries for those who do not sin. There is no stress for an individual who does no evil and there is no sadness for an individual who is not disobedient and then he continues فيواصل الفقير ويقول أما من أمسى في غضب الله وأصبح في معاصي الله فَهُوَ فِي فِي الْغَمِّ وَالْحُزْنِ وَالْهَمْ He says, as for those who retire at night while Allah is angry with them and they awaken in the morning in the disobedience of Allah then those are the people who will experience worry and distress and sadness. مَاذَا تَعْمَلُ أَنْتَ فِي نَهَارِكْ So what do you, tell me, the Amir is saying to him, tell me what you do throughout the day. فَأَخْبَرَ And he, he informed him. قَالَ هَلْ وَرَاءَكَ أَهْلْ قَالَ نَعَمْ 
أمي عجوز كبيرة وأختي عمياء حسيرة. So the Amir asked him then, so do you have any family? Do you have any dependents? And he says, yes, I do. My mother is an elderly woman, and I have a sister who is practically blind. Who is practically, practically blind. آتي بإفطارهما قبل الغروب وهما تصومان كل يوم فنفر جميعا ثم ننام. He continues to tell him what it is that he does. He says, this is the condition of my family. I have this elderly mother and a sister who is practically blind. Every day I bring iftar for them. What is their iftar? What is their dinner? That piece of bread. Remember, he buys a piece of bread before returning home. I bring iftar for them because they fast every day. We eat together and then we go to sleep. Mata tastaqid. When do you awaken? This is the question of the Amir. When do you get up? قَالَ إِذَا نَزَلَ الْحَيُّ الْقَيُّومِ يعني في الثلث الأخير من الليل So the poor man responds, I get up, I awaken, when the everlasting descends. That is, he comes to the last heaven. He's speaking about the last third, the last third of the night. فَقَالَ الْأَمِيرُ أَلَا تُرِيدُ مَعِيشَتَنَا قَالَ لَا وَاللَّهِ don't you want to live my life, our life, in the palace? And the man says, absolutely not. Walima, how come? قَالَ أَخَافُ أَنْ يَقْسُوَ قَلْبِي وَيَضِيعَ دِينِي قَالَ أَتُحِبُّ أَنْ تَكُونَ حَمَّالًا فِي السُّوقِ جَائِعًا فِي الشَّمْسِ وَالْعُرِيِّ وَالْهَمِّ وَالْغَمِّ وَالْكُلْفَةِ وَلَا تَكُونُ فِي قَصْرِ الْإِمَارَةِ And so the Amin says to him, so you're satisfied with this? You want to continue working, you know, as uh, in, in the market doing what you do in the heat of the shams, uh, in, in the heat of the sun? You want to continue living this life of difficulty? You're not willing to give it up to come and live the life of royalty here in the palace? Qala He says, yes, by Allah. I'm not willing to give any of that, any of that up. فَنَزَلَ وَتَرَكَ And so he left. فأخذ الأمير يتأمل وينظر وهو في حيرة فقد ألقى عليه هذا المسكين محاضرات في الإيمان وطرق قلبه بدروس من التوحيد وألقى عليه كلمات تنفذ إلى القلب. So the Amir just stood there watching him. He couldn't believe what he just heard. He pondered these words because these words that came from the man were like many lectures about faith. These words reached the heart of the Amir. So he just kept watching him and pondering over his words until the man until the man disappeared. ثم في ليلة من الليالي استفاق الأمير من غيبوبته وصحى من نومه. وعلم أنه كان في سبات عميق وفي نوم طويل وأن داعي الله يدعوه لينتبه فاستيقظ. And one night, all of a sudden, this Amir gets up. He comes out of that deep slumber or sleep that he was in, that coma that he was in, and he realized that Allah was calling him. He realized that he was being called to something much greater. He had to really know what life was about. فَاسْتَيْقَضَ وَقَالَ لِحَاشِيَتِهِ وَخَدَمِهِ أَنَا ذَاهِبٌ إِلَى مَكَانٍ فَإِذَا أَتَى أَبِي الْخَلِيفَةِ الْمَأْمُونِ بَعْدَ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ فَقُولُ لَهُ أَنِّي ذَهَبْتِ وَسَوْفَ أَلْتَقِي أَنَا وَإِيَّاهُ يَوْمَ الْعَرْضِ الْأَكْبَرِ And so he says to uh, his servants, he says to them, listen, I'm leaving. I'm going somewhere. And my father, the Khalifa, will return in about three days' time. At that time, let him know that I left. But you don't tell him anything else. Except that our meeting, 
our next meeting will be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They asked him, Lima, why? قَالَ نَظَرْتُ إِلَى نَفْسِي وَوَجَدْتُ أَنَّنِي فِي غَيْبُوبَةٍ وَفِي سُبَاتٍ وَفِي ضَيَاعٍ وَفِي ضَلَالٍ فَأُرِيدُ أَنْ أُهَاجِرَ بِرُوحِي إِلَى اللَّهِ They asked him, why are you doing this? He says that I have now awakened and realized that I am lost, I am far astray. I realize that I've been in a deep sleep all along. It's as though I have been in a coma. خرج وسط الليل وخلع لباس الملك ولبس لباس الفقير ثم مشى في الطرقات واختفى عن العيون. He got up, he changed his clothing, he wore the clothing of the poor now, and he went out walking through the streets until until he couldn't be seen any longer. لم يعلم الخليفة ولا أهل بغداد أين ذهب الأمير. وكما ذكر أهل التاريخ ركب إلى واسط وهناك غير هيئته لهيئة المساكين وعمل مع تاجر من التجار في صنع البراط والطين والبناء وبدأ يحفظ القرآن ويصوم الاثنين والخميس ويقوم الليل ويتصل بالحي القيوم ما عنده من المال إلا ما يكفيه ليوم واحد. Then he continued on until he came to an area known as Wasif, southeast of Baghdad. And there he changed. Now he was like any other poor man. And he worked for a merchant and he worked with him making bricks. This was his job. What else did he do? He started to memorize the Qur'an. He started to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. He would spend his nights in salah, in prayer, and calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَهَبَ عَنْهُ الْغَمُّ وَالْهَمُّ وَالْحُزَنُ In this lifestyle now, he realized that there was no sadness. There was no stress. There was no worry. Whatsoever. ذهب عنه الكبر والخيلاء من قلبه. He no longer felt that he was superior in his heart. He was humbled. ولما أتته الوفاة أعطى التاجر خاتمه وقال أنا ابن الخليفة المأمون. And when his death came near, he took off his ring and he gave it to his boss. He gave it to that merchant. And he said to him, I am the son of the Khalifa, Al-Ma'moon. إِذَا مِتُّ فَغَسِّلْنِي وَكَفِّلْنِي وَأُقْبُرْنِي ثُمَّ سَلِّمْ هَذَا الْخَاتَمْ لِأَبِي فَغَسَّلَهُ وَكَفَّنَهُ وَصَلَّى عَلَيْهِ وَدَفَنَهُ وَأَتَى بِالْخَاتَمِ إِلَى الْمَأْمُونِ So when the man died, his boss did exactly that. He prepared his body for burial. He washed him, he shrouded him, he prayed over him, and then he buried him. Then he went with this ring to the Khalifa, to Al-Ma'mun. أَتَى إِلَى هَذَا الْخَلِيفَةَ أَتَى إِلَى الْمَأْمُونَ وَالْمَأْمُونُ يَظُنُّ أَنَّ ابْنَهُ قُتِلْ أَوْ فُقِدْ أَوْ ذَهَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ فِي مَكَانِ لَا يُدْرَى عَنْهِ I mean, all along, the Khalifa thought that his son perhaps was killed. He thought maybe he's lost somewhere. That he's gone, you know, where nobody knows anything about him. This is what the Khalifa was thinking. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الْخَاتَمْ شَهِقَ وَبَكَى حَتَّى ارْتَفَعَ صَوْتُهُ But of course when he saw the ring, things changed. He gasped and he began to cry. And he raised his voice while he was crying. The people around could hear him. فَسَأَلَ تَاجِرَ عَنْهِ And he asked the merchant about him. قَالَ أَيُّهَا تَاجِرُ هَذَا هُوَ إِبْنِي فَمَاذَا كَانَ يَفْعَلُ This belongs to my son. Tell me something. Tell me what he used to do. فَقَالَ لَهُ تَاجِرُ كَانَ عَابِدًا نَاسِكًا أَوَّابًا 
sawaman zakiran lillahi azza wa jal yaljau ilallah ma taraka fi dunya illa qimat al kafan so the man now says to the khalifa this is who your son was he was a man who was close to allah he was a godly man he used to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a great deal he used to pray to Allah Jalla wa ala. He was a devout worshipper, is who he was. And he left this world, and the only thing he left behind, or all that he left behind, was what was sufficient to purchase his kafan, to purchase, to purchase his shroud. فَارْتَفَعَ صَوْتُ الْخَلِيفَةِ بُكَاءً وَالْوُزَرَاءَ وَعَرَفُوا أَنَّهُ عَرَفَ الطَّرِيقِ لَكِنَّهُمْ ما مشوا في نفس الطريق فمن يريد الله أن يهديه شرح صدره للإسلام. Upon hearing this, the Khalifa along with the ministers all started to cry, and you could hear them crying, and they realized that this man, the Amir, had found Allah Azza wa Jal. He had found the way, but unfortunately for them. They were not able to follow him in that path. And this is why we learn in the Quran that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide someone, then he opens their hearts to an Islam, to true, to true Iman. Really, after hearing these types of stories, it's important that we ponder. We should ask questions. And in this case, we ask a question like, what is true happiness? Is this where we find happiness? In wealth? In fancy homes? In palaces? سنفهم بعد أن نسمع هذه القصص أن السعادة في السجود لله تبارك وتعالى أن السعادة في تلاوة كتاب الله عز وجل السعادة في ذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى When if you really ponder these types of stories and of course by pondering them I mean really think about the way that these people lived in the hopes that we will follow in their footsteps insha'Allah ta'ala then what do we realize? we realize that true happiness is the sujood before Allah azza wa jal we realize that true happiness will come in the recitation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala true happiness will come with the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal if we want to know whether this is true or not, then all we need to do is try it out. إِذَا أَرَادَ أَحَدُنَا أَنْ يَعْلَمْ هَلْ هَذِهِ فِعْلًا حَقِيقًا أَمْ لَا فَعَلَيْنَا أَنْ نُجَرِّبْ أَنَا لَا أَقُولْ إِنَّنَا نَتْرُكُ الدُّنْيَا بِأَكْمَلِهَا وَإِنَّمَا أَقُولْ يُرَكِّزُ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِنَّا فِي عَلَاقَتِهِ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ رَبِّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى We are not saying that you know, we shouldn't enjoy anything in this world whatsoever. Of course, that is, not, that is not what we're saying. But rather, what I'm saying is that every one of us, our focus should not be on hoarding wealth. Our focus has to be on our relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As'alullah azza wa jal an yashraha sudurana lil iman. As'alullah subhanahu wa ta'ala أن يجعلنا ممن يرضى بما كتب الله جل وعلا له وأن لا يسعى وأن لا يجري وراء الدنيا ثم يهلك وهو لا يدري إلى أين يذهب أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد 
أيها الأحبة قبل أن نفترق اليوم أود أن أذكر نفسي وإياكم بأن لنا إخوانا في أنحاء العالم يقتلون ويذبحون ويشردون فعلينا ألا ننساهم علينا بالدعاء أوصي نفسي وإياكم بأن, لا بأن نلجأ إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ونسأله جل وعلا أن يفرج همومهم وهمومهم Before we part company this afternoon, a reminder to myself and the rest of you that we have brothers and sisters in all parts of the world, Muslims who are being slaughtered, who are being killed, who are being uh, driven out of their lands for no other reason other than them saying La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So I remind myself and the rest of you that we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua. We need, we need to supplicate, we need to beg of Allah jalla wa ala to lift those difficulties that they are living and this is something that you and I should be doing regularly in our sujood, in our salah. لا تنسوا وأنتم ساجدون بين يدي رب العالمين أقرب ما يكون العبد لربه لا تنسوا إخوانكم don't forget when you are in sujood that you are closer to Allah than you will ever be. If we truly are concerned and if we truly care for our brothers and sisters, then in our sujood we will ask and beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make matters easy for them. ثُمَّ صَلُّوا وَسَلِمُوا عَلَىٰ خَاتَمِ النَّبِيِّينَ وَإِمَامِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ فَقَدْ أَمَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ فِي كِتَابِهِ الْمُبِينَ فقال جل من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله عليه بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الكفرة والمشركين اللهم دمر أعداء الدين وأهلك الزنادق والملحدين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ورافع الدرجات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين وقض الدين عن المدينين واشف اللهم مرضى المسلمين وارحم موتاهم أجمعين يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم ثبت أقدامهم واربط على قلوبهم وأنزل السكينة عليهم وانصرهم على عدوهم وعدوك يا عزيز يا قوي اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين المضطهدين المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم خذ بأيديهم وعجل بنصرهم يا عزيز يا قوي يا جبار يا قوي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا باطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم أصلح حال المسلمين اللهم أصلح حال المسلمين اللهم أصلح حال المسلمين اللهم ردنا إليك ردا جميلا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا ووحد صفوفنا واجمع كلمتنا على الحق يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا إلى صلاتكم رحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله